Okay, well now that that spring break event is over, let's move on, I guess, and try to get our grades up while we can. Learn some things, go to work. Go to sleep, more sleep, job. My cat's breath smells like cat food. Hmm. Oh, hello, Rakesh. Hello, Anne. Are you back here? Oh, hey, Rakesh. How's the class treating you? Well, with you grading it, it has been most enlightening. Hey, I haven't been showing you favoritism, you know. Actually, I told the professor. I thought he'd have a problem with it, but he just said something about a great quandary and... Well, anyway... <laughs> I am glad you haven't favored me. I would hate to think that my acumen is a result of favors and not my own intellect. Not that intellect is anything but a lie, but... Well, it is one of my favorite lies. <laughs> You've got a pretty big lie there, then, eh? I mean... You know, in the context that you... Sorry, that came out totally wrong. I think it was a compliment. It's okay. Some of the professor's concepts are a little past me as well. I really do think you're a smart one, Rakesh. You may not be the most book smart, but you've got a creativity like I've never seen. You are sweet to me, my dear one. Rakesh leans over my desk, giving me a sweet long kiss. Aw, so cute, my dear one. I will be working on my next paper when you get home. Come take a look, okay? I'd love to. Oh, and that gave us the final 100. Long smooches. Taking care of business every day. Aw, so cute. My dear one. Aw. Shucks. Shucks. Oh, I know this bed is just a cheap single, but after a long day, it feels fantastic. The last quarter has barely begun, and I'm already feeling blown out. I even made it home before everyone else. I pull my cell phone out to put it on the charger and notice a text from Rakesh. We haven't had a chance to hang out much the last few days, except for, you know, earlier in the week. <clears throat> it might be nice to go out tonight. Maybe I'll give Rakesh a call. Yeah... I smile and call up the speed dial contact for Rakesh. Hopefully we can at least catch a bite to eat together. Oh, Anne, I am glad you called. In my room you will find a screwdriver, a color wheel, and two boxes of streamers. I need them immediately. Rakesh, I'll be there in five minutes. I knew I could count on you. <laughs> Aww. Five minutes later I show up in the park trying to spot Rakesh. I finally spot him waving at me from over by a tree. I walk over, handing him the box with all the things he asked for. Thank goodness. What are you up to, Rakesh? Well, primarily, I wanted to see you. <laughs> Rakesh scratches his head with a goofy grin. I reach over and give Rakesh a quick peck on the lips. Oh, I thought you were punching him in the arm. <laughs> oh, sweetie, I missed you too. Though you could have just asked. Rakesh smiles and shrugs as he moves away from the tree over to where he stashed his bike. See, there was a reason for my things. I smile as Rakesh begins comparing his streamers to the color wheel to the bike. <laughs> so, what are you taking this quarter? A few painting classes and a life modeling class. I'm really feeling like the time with models will be a big help to me. No medicine this quarter? Rakesh frowns and pauses in the middle of taping streamers to the bike. Before he can respond, I amend. Not that it's a bad thing. Though, if you're looking to draw anatomy, it might help somewhat. Just saying. Rakesh's frown disappears into a happy smile, and he keeps taping streamers to his bike. Yes, I decided to skip medicine this quarter. I think the live models will be much more used than the dead ones. Heh, <laughs> can't argue with that. Rakesh smiles and gets up to hug me. With arms around each other, we walk down the path for a bit. Thank you for coming so quickly, Anne. I am so happy that I can count on you. Of course. It was fun to hurry out on an important mission. Suddenly, I remember Rakesh's bike isn't with us. Ahem. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, what the hell happened to my bike? 
We should probably go now. Perhaps we can do something another night. <laughs> Definitely. It's so much fun with you, man. <laughs> Rakesh smiles at me and we chuckle. <laughs> Bonus points for ruining Chad's bike. That is amazing. <laughs> you go, Rakesh. Oh, that's so funny. Studying, sleeping, working. Looks like a quiet week otherwise. Oh, never mind. I'm not really sure what I want to do tonight. I should probably get some work done, but it's Saturday and I feel like taking a little time to myself. Oh, this. We finally see a resolution to this, I, I hope and I really hope. I respectfully request that you back off. With all due respect, please stay away from me. I turn for a moment, wondering if Rakesh is talking to me, but I don't think he is. He's got a notebook in one hand, and he's tapping it with a pen in the other. He seems to be considering what he wants to write down. He looks up from his notebook and catches me looking at him. Ah, Anne, welcome home. I must tell my parents how I feel. If possible, without telling them how I feel. He looks at me as though I've got the answers hidden in my back pocket. I'm not sure what to tell him. Well, my I don't think my miniskirt has pockets, but we'll see what we can find. I sigh a little internally, but give Rakesh a smile. Alright, let's hear what you've got so far. What are you trying to tell them? Are you finally ready to tell them you're not interested in becoming a doctor? Well, something like this, yes. I received a letter from them the other day stating that they are interested in coming out to see how the school is treating me. I cannot let them come here. They would discover what I have been doing, so my letter must respectfully tell them there is no need. Hmm, that's going to be a little bit tricky. Alright, so what have you got so far? Let me see. I have to translate a bit. Um, dearest father and mother, I am fine. You needn't check on me. Everything's great. I am learning everything about medicine. Please feel free to cram it and stay where you are. <laughs> it doesn't really say that, does it? Well, I did say I was translating a bit. It's actually in English. They'll want to know that I'm learning the language well. Here, you can see. I shake my head, but take the letter anyway. It is in English, and Rakesh did paraphrase it pretty well. Even if he was being a bit sarcastic. Wait, are you actually sending them a paper letter? In this day and age? No, no. I'm just planning what to put in the emailed letter. Oh. Well... Hmm. I guess I'm just not really sure how to advise him to move forward. Rakesh, you know you have to write this letter, right? I mean, I can't write it for you. I know, I know. I just... I'm not sure what direction to go in. Should I try to tell them that we're all sick? Should I tell them our place has rats? You know, you could always go with the truth. Rakesh looks at me like I've grown a hole in my head. <sighs> I consider what he should do. You gotta go for the truth, man. I know it's gonna suck majorly, but you gotta do it. Well, sweetie, if I were you, I'd probably just tell them the truth. They don't need to come check on your medical knowledge because you've dropped from the medical path. It will be painful, but it will cut through the lies the fastest and you'll be able to move forward. And then you'll feel better without having that weighing you down. Rakesh frowns and rolls his eyes as though he just told me all the reasons why that wouldn't work. If you're still nervous about it, you can always proceed it with bad news to help cushion the blow a bit. It really will help clear the air, Rakesh. Rakesh frowns and looks at me doubtfully, but shrugs. Stranger things have worked, I suppose. I'll see what I can put together. Aw, that whole conversation changed because we're on his path now. Aw, so sweet. Oh, poor Rakesh. I'm so sorry, man. This is sucking. But what can you do? Hmm. Maybe we should have a nap in the middle of the week. We don't need quite as much money as I don't think. Okay, let's start. Uh, 
Hey, car, car. As I sit in my room, I find myself staring at the ceiling. It's been a good year so far. I've had a lot of fun, gotten used to college life. <laughs> I've even gotten together with Rakesh, of all people. <laughs> but as I think about what I've got done this year, I can't help but feel like I haven't really made a lot of progress on my greater goals. I mean, I came to college to get away from my surroundings, to get out of my comfort zone. I guess I've done that a bit. I feel like I've gotten more confident, but I still feel so shy. It kind of terrifies me, but I feel like I have to do something big, really get something going. Maybe if I can, I can feel like I've truly left my old life behind, like I'm really ready to claim this new life I'm leading. You go, Annie Bell. I call up Carmen, and 20 minutes later, she's in my room as we discuss what I can do. Oh, I've got it. You know what you need to do, Annie Bell? You need to throw a party. What? No way. How would I throw a party? I wouldn't even know where to begin. Exactly. You're trying to cement the new you, right? The best way to do that and really break out of your shell? Throw a killer party. Uh, I... Um, I think you're right. Of course I'm right. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. We'll have to find a space to hold it in and figure out who to invite. We can't just have it here. And what, invite your housemates? That's not very far out of your comfort zone, Annie Bell. Come on, think big with me. Okay, okay, you're right. You're going to help me though, right? Of course. You don't have to do this alone. I'm right here with you. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Thank you so much, Car Car. Oh, we're gonna need some entertainment, too. Alright, I know a guy. I'm sure I can think of something fun to do for people. Well, not to put too fine a point on it, Annie Bell, but don't you know a rock star? Oh my gosh, yeah, that's a good idea. Of course it is. Think of some other stuff to do, though, okay? Definitely. Oh, Car Car, this is gonna be so much fun! I know! Terrifying, but fun. Carmen and I hug as we squeal over our plans. This really will be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see what happens. Just can't wait. Oh. I give a stretch after another long day of classes. I'm looking at the stairs, thinking how nice it's going to be back in my room. On my way up, I hear Sally and Isabella arguing. I can't tell what it's about, but I can see Max standing between them. <sighs> I breathe a silent sigh of relief. Mom always warned me about bad boys. Once I'm back in my room, I put on some headphones and get back to my business. I really hope Rakesh and I don't have a fight like that. <laughs> I still want to know what that was all about. Do I find out when I do Max's route? Do I? I want to know. I want to know. Please tell me. Ugh. That bothers me when that happens. I'm just like, what is going on? Because it doesn't seem like he ends up with Sally or Isabella. Eh. Oh, well. Moving on. It's class time. It's still early in the quarter. I'm not sure what to expect from Professor Merriweather. Still, it should at least be entertaining. Alright, if you're in this class, you've probably got the basics down. Which means it's time to start getting serious. Now, normally, we do this sort of thing in a lab. But today is special for two reasons. Number one, some brain genius decided to mix glycerin with KMN04 in our labs, meaning there is now an opportunity for alternate environment learning. Secondly, the morgue is full and my contact is on the cheap. Cue the drums. As soon as she says that, one of the professor's TAs walks into the room pushing a cart with a blanket over it, and a suspiciously, suspiciously body-shaped lump under the blanket. This is a 103 class. I'm pretty sure we're not up to this stuff yet. As soon as I see the look of glee on the professor's face, though, I know we're going to do this. Alright, better question. Who wants to make the first incision? Don't worry, he's dead. He complains very little. Around the room, everyone seems unsure what to do with this. A few hands tentatively go up. Come on, come on! You won't get a chance like this for another two or three years! Um, Professor Merriweather, are you sure this conforms to regulations? I'm sorry, I thought this was biology. Apparently it's intro to law. Well, as it turns out, I've probably got a degree in that too, so how about you shut up? As a matter of fact, looks like someone just volunteered to take all the bill- 
I mean, the first cut. The professor stares at me as the entire rest of the class turns to look at me with a mixture of amusement and horror. I wait a few moments to see if the professor is going to change her mind, but finally I stand up and walk down to the front of the class. Here you go, Captain Rules. How about you choose our lesson plan for today? Pick a spot. We'll examine whatever you cut up. The professor hands me some plastic gloves, which I put on as she stands there staring at me. She then hands me a scalpel, and I look at the body. Luckily, the TA left his face and lower half covered. I walk over to the corpse and try to figure out what I'm going to do. I guess I'll cut into his chest. Whew. I examine the chest of the cadaver. I'm not sure what area I want to examine. Heart? Lungs? He's not getting any deader, kid. Just pick something. Finally, I make a deep incision just below his right lung, pulling the knife around to make a good flap. That's better. All right, looks like we're looking at the lungs today. Now, the first thing you'll notice is the lack of blood. That's because they drain these things and because I'm not a complete idiot. The professor looks at me just standing there and makes shooing motions. I slowly return to my seat as Professor Merriweather begins her lecture properly. I can't believe she had me do that. It wasn't my favorite, but it was still a fascinating learning opportunity. I suppose. <laughs> there is no try. Studying, napping, st studying. And week 19 is done. <laughs>